Here we are, June 3rd, and uh, it's time to get all these pesky radishes out. See, I'm starting to get a few here, but just so you get an idea, I just, I'm, I've got them growing in between the, in between the rows of the onions. And so I just come through and pull them up. Try not to get too many onions in the process. It goes pretty fast. Yeah, you can see that. Then we'll just clean out that row that way. June 10th, and the peas are flowering. The kiwi phlox is flowering. <clears throat> the rye is flowering. Our friends, the squash are coming on. Some more than others. And look at the difference between the with and without the wall of water there. That's the smaller one. Garlic's starting to scape. I've seen our first couple scapes coming on there. It's a windy June 13th, and we're doing another checkup with the old garden. Pretty soon now, it's going to be time to take that bok choy out of there. Another day or two, it's starting to get warm. It was supposed to be pretty hot today, but now we're going to get rain. And so, uh, one thing, notice the slugs are starting to get to it. Yep, so it's time to harvest that. Another thing to notice is the uh, tomatoes, before we got the, the mulch on them like this, they get, the, they get these spots. And, but we noticed that the fever few really keeps them away from the other, other plants. So that's a, that's a nice little touch there. Fever few helping out the tomato a little bit. I've noticed that with shervil as well, as you can see the shervils over here. And these guys have got a little bit of biting, but not as much. But that's all going to be harvested now. Mulch rings. First I take, I'm out cutting the grass here. You can see I'm cutting the grass with the scythe. And then I, I leave it out here on the grass for a while. The reason I do that is because since I haven't turned the irrigation on, we're getting to like dry spots like that. And so when the grass starts to dry out and stuff, I'll put these on top of that and that'll keep it from getting so dried out, right? And that's worked pretty well over here too. You can see it helps to dry out the grass. And then when it's dry like this, when it gets to be this, I use it instead of straw. And I just roll them up into these bird nests like this. Okay. So I'll put on one of these. And I grab the tomato and I pull the leaves through. And everything goes on. Voila. And you've got a tom protected tomato plant. Have a here we have a little update on the uh, potatoes. You see them growing out of the uh, compost pile here. These guys came on uh, first, uh, the ones that were planted higher. I'm just noticing now that they're coming in, the ones at the bottom are coming in, you know, so they're just popping up, whereas the ones up at top have been up. Yeah, you can see two weeks they've been raging up here. So now I know the ones at the top are going to, come on a lot sooner so you can see here the the tobacco plants have really come up quickly and the arugula there's the arugula right there is coming up and this is the edible chrysanthemum the kiku and that's a delicious little uh, plant to eat 
and of course Lupin. And there's Ella Campaign growing back there with the uh, irises. The daylilies are starting, but they haven't really popped yet. It's uh, got a few more, a few more days for that, I guess. In the meantime, we can enjoy the Siberian iris. And the peonies coming on. You see the kiwi flocks in the background. That's probably their last appearance on video here. If we're going to pull those up, they're starting to lose their flowers and go to seed. So we'll take those out. And uh, here's Solstice in the, the bird bathing and rock garden area. The sedums are starting to take off, you can see. They're usually in full flower pretty soon. Once the sun comes out, that'd be brilliant. The mushrooms are in hiding right now. Bok choy in a box is half harvested. The chard is taken off. And these sunflowers, I got a renegade sunflower or two in there. I have to take one of those out. It's nice to have them later in the season. For now, I'm using the daisies and the yarrow. They're just outside the box here, <laughs> so to speak. And uh, they is, they give us some shade in the, the hot times. I'll uh, I'll just trim the trim the flowers off and leave the stalks to give a little shade if it gets too sunny. All right, solstice in the side garden here. Usually I would expect to find some shaggy parasols on this run, but I haven't seen any yet. That bench is from the dojo. We moved that out here. And uh, Lisa Berry's old sculpture is still hanging in there. Parts of it. The colt's foot's looking nice and perky. Gets hot and lays down in the afternoon, but it's all standing up now. The Japanese knotweed is getting extreme. The other day I saw the squirrel eating the aphid curled leaves. And he would come over there and see that, 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 like the leaves that are curled over full of aphids. And the squirrel was pulling those off and licking them off and throwing little curled leaves away. Licking all the tasty aphids off of that. Little squirrel. Tree rats. And this is like year 25 for this uh, Siberian cherry. Also called a Nanking cherry. I think this is, we're going to have to take it out. It seems to have gotten uh, a pretty bad fungus. We've got new, newer bushes coming on anyway. But this hasn't produced for several years. I think it's just getting senescent. And the Siberian irises are just hopping in front of the hops teepee. See the peonies in the background there. You should see some interesting stuff there. And you see the totem pole utility pole in the background there. Happy souls.